So now that 22 is done, let's take a look at Advent of Code 2022, day 23. Ooh, what's this? Oh, is this the force field that we, uh... yeah, let's, let's take a look here. So lava is getting bigger. The river's getting narrower here. I'm not sure what these yellow dots are for. Maybe this is the path the elves are taking. And this is the force field we just encountered. And now these are getting brighter. Okay, as we're getting closer to them, I guess. Day 23, unstable diffusion, as opposed to stable diffusion. Okay. All right. You enter a large crater of gray dirt where the grove is supposed to be. Oh, all around you, plants you imagine were expected to be full of fruit are instead withered and broken. A large group of elves has formed in the middle of the grove. But this volcano has been dormant for months. Without ash, the fruit can't grow. You look up to see a massive snow-capped mountain towering above you. It's not like there are other active volcanoes here. We've looked everywhere. But our scanner shows active magma flows. Clearly, it's going somewhere. They finally notice you at the edge of the grove. Your pack almost overflowing with random star fruit you've been collecting. Yeah, how many do we have so far? 44. Wow. Behind you, elephants and monkeys explore the groves, looking concerned. Then the elves recognize the ash cloud slowly spreading above your recent detour. Why do you? How is? Did you just? Before any of them can form a complete question, another elf speaks up. Okay, new plan. We have almost enough fruit already, and ash from the plume should spread here eventually. If we quickly plant new seedlings now, we can still make it to the extraction point. Spread out! The elves each reach into their pack and pull out a tiny plant. The plants rely on important nutrients from the ash, so they can't be planted too close together. There isn't enough time to let the elves figure out where to plant the seedlings themselves. You quickly scan the grove, your puzzle input, and note their positions. All right, let's get our puzzle input. 2022, day 23. Oh, okay. Is this our, is this our grove here? Note their position. The scan shows elves. Oh, these are elves. Oh, this is a lot of elves. A lot more elves than I thought. And empty ground. Outside of your scan, more empty ground extends a long way in every direction. The scan is oriented so that north is up. Orthogonal directions here are north, south, west, and east, while diagonal... Uh-oh, we got to deal with diagonals now? The elves follow a time-consuming process to figure out where they should each go. You can speed up this process considerably. The process consists of some number of rounds, during which elves alternate between considering where to move and actually moving. Okay, so this is kind of like an interesting twist on the game of life, right? Instead of saying... Okay, well, let's see what the rules are. We're actually moving around, so we're not making new elves or, you know, new elves aren't being born and dying. They're just moving. So I think that's what makes the interesting twist. Uh, during the first half of each round, each elf considers the eight positions adjacent to themselves. If no other elves are in one of those eight positions, the elves does not do anything during this round. Okay. Otherwise, the elf looks in each of the four directions, in each of the following order, and proposes proposes moving one step in the first valid direction there's no elf north northeast northwest the elf proposes moving north okay and the same with south west and east understood understood after each elf has had a chance to propose a move the second half of the round can begin simultaneously each elf moves to their proposed destination tile if they were the only elf to propose moving to that position all right, so we're going to have like a, um, a hash set that contains the current positions of all the elves. So, we, right, we have a hash set of all of the elves' current positions. We'll create a hash set of the proposed positions. Oh, if two or more elves propose moving to the same position, none of those elves move. So we don't want a hash set. We want a hash map which says how many elves want to move to that proposed position. And then we have a resolution phase. Finally, at the end of the first round, the first direction the elves considered is moved to the end of the list of directions. Right, so before we even get to that. So it looks like they're just rotating these things. That's fine. Um, so we have a consideration thing. And then they move. Right? So then we have to update our current hash set with where the elves want to go. Some of them... Don't go anywhere, right? So we can just insert them into the new map. If 
if two or more elves want to go to the same place, then we just leave them alone. So they don't do anything either. So we just insert them directly into the map. If our proposal contains a one, right? If a count of elves want to enter that position contains a one, then we just move the elf there. Okay, I think I get it. And the end of the round, the first direction is moved to the end of the list, right? So the, the first direction north goes to the end of the list. That makes sense. We're just, that way it's not the same thing every single time. Right, that makes sense. Okay, smaller example, consider just these five elves. They spread out, they spread out. Larger example above proceeds as follows. Yeah, so is this our test input up here? Yeah. All right. All right, and we'll look at these uh, after we write the code. Uh, and then what, what are we trying to answer? What question are we trying to answer? To make sure they're on the right track, it says how many empty ground tiles does that rectangle contain? So the, what's the rectangle though? To make sure they're on the right track, the elves would like to check after round 10 that they're making good progress toward covering enough ground. To do this, count the number of empty ground tiles contained by the smallest rectangle that contains every elf. Oh, okay, so we just min-max the, the width and height. Okay, um, multiply that, multiply the size by each other. And then um, empty ground tiles and just subtract the number of elves, which we already have in the hash set because the hash set.len will be the number of elves. Okay. Uh, let's do this. Oops, why do, there we go, uh, 22. Slash mod. Right. We're so close to the end of this the year. I'm happy I'm getting through them, but disappointed that we're going to not have any more to do for another 11 months. But day 23. Um, it's option command. Oh. Command three for that one. Um, let's do bacon. Yep. So now we just create the file, jump to the file, fill in the template 22, 23, and we go. Okay. Perfect. And now we, what do we need to do is save the grove, the current grove, right? It's just a, a oh, so it's called, right? Yeah, Grove. Okay. It's a hash set of, and we'll do I64, I64 again. <clears throat> and then parsing is, should be very easy. It's just, you know, if it's a hash, then we stick the um, entry in the um, hash set. Lines equals AOC lib read lines test input dot text for uh, line in lines row comma line in lines dot enumerate just like we did last time for column comma character in line dot chars dot enumerate if c is equal to hash then self grove insert Row call. And that failed because I forgot to put a closing brace here. And we need to import hash set. We have to iterate to enumerate. Um, right, as I64. And the reason I want to use I64 is so I don't have to worry about so adding and subtracting and all that kind of stuff. Let's create a function to print display, draw. Let's call it draw. And this will just take a hash set of all right. Um, we also want to get the dimensions and we need that for the an real answer too. Um, hash set.
and it's just going to return oh it's going to return min max um min max right so um it'll be um roman colman uh, row max and call max right and so we just need to say hash set iterate fold um max i64 max i64 min min a b all right a is going to be our tuple and b is going to be the dimensions and then we just say a dot zero dot min b dot zero a dot zero dot a dot one dot min Will that work? It compiles. Um, and now we just want to draw this out. So in part, at the end of parse here, we'll say draw self grove. And now we just get the dimensions. Right? And for row in r0 dot dot equals r1 for call in c0 dot dot equals column one if hs contains um row call print else print oops and then printlin and that there i love the format thing so i don't have to worry about doing all that stuff all right let's see what happens if we draw it is that even close to what the, the sample input is that's not even close what is this i mean it's showing just the that's weird Four four, I'm now showing you a different amount. What? Did I do this wrong? Maybe you can't do it that way. Maybe I'm just trying to be too fancy. I uh, sixty four max. Um, column zero is I64 max. Um, row one, column one, and then these are mins. I guess I can't do. I was I was trying to do something a little too fancy there. I guess um, four p in. Let's let's just call this Grove, and I'll just say four g in Grove if g dot no yeah r0 is equal to g dot zero dot min um it's r0 dot min of g of zero there and then c0 is the same thing but using the one and then one 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 max max does this not work? Maybe the fold, maybe folding doesn't work the way I think it does. Oops. Um, and then we have to return R0, C0, R1, C1. Okay. Now it's showing the whole thing. All right. So this, obviously, this is not the way to do this. 
in case anybody's wondering, I'm showing you the way not to do it. There you go. Yeah, that's that's the whole thing. So now we just need to create a, a step function, um, which goes through one round and returns a new Right? That's all we need to do. And this returns a new grove. Hash set I64, I64. So our answer, let answer, uh, mut, new grove. It's hash set new. Um, and then we're going to also need, like I said, we're going to need a. Um, Oh, Ankara says, did I mean A2 and A3 in the fold? Yes. Yeah, I think I think that's it. I think that's what it is. Um, let's try that real quick here. Let's just do that. I was so hung up on the um, on the one, zeros and ones. That was dumb. Yeah, I think I think that was the problem. Let's let's find out. Comment this out. Oh, uh, right, and I call it Grove. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Akras. That um, that makes me happier that we can do it that way. And we don't need that anymore. And I'm actually going to underscore this one because. I want to keep it in here, uh, but not for the final one. Okay, so now, how do we do a step? We have to go through each dimension. Oh, yes, this is why I want to... Hmm. In here, we'll stick the... I'm, I'm, wondering, I'm going to save the, the di directions as a constant, but I don't think you can... Can you declare consts like this? Inside a function, I mean. Does it let you do that? And will it ho hopefully remember not to reinitialize it each time? Yeah, yeah, okay. So we have directions, but now we have eight directions, right? We have to we have to look in all eight directions and see if there's no other elves. And if there's no other elves, then then we're we're done. If we are, then we do one of these steps. So the first thing we'll do is create a, a thing of eight. Um, and we'll do it this way. Um, so we'll start up, right? So up is negative one, zero. Um, then it's negative one, one. Then it's zero, one. So th this is up, uh, sorry, north, northeast, east. Then we want to go southeast, um, south. Uh, southwest, west, and then northwest. So that's those. Yeah, that's annoying. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is create a four-way check here. Const check. And it's going to have um, I64, I64, Send me three. Send me four. All right. So what I can do, oops, this goes like that. What I can do is each one of these, it'll check. I'll I'll put in north, northeast, northwest in each one of these four. Right. These three in these four, and then if. The test passes. We know that the zeroth entry in the in this array, in this slice, will be the direction we want to consider going. All right. So what we'll do is we create uh, north. So north is negative one zero, but we also want to consider northeast and northwest. Right, and then south is one zero, but we're also going to consider southeast. 
and southwest. And then we're going to look west is the next direction. So that's west. And we're also going to consider northwest and southwest. And if I get these things wrong, that's going to be a pain to debug, right? East is 0, 1, and we're going to consider also northeast and southeast. Okay, so that should build, right? So far, so good. So far, so good. Okay, so now, oh, each step has to have a different starting position. Ah, dang it. All right, because the first first round, right, they said we, we're going to wrap these things around. So every round we do, um, so, yeah, now I'm thinking I just want to stick this in a struct. Struct. Um, grove. And it's going to be grove with a hash set. Hash, yeah, hash set. And then this will have the um, impl. That way it'll be accessible like that. And then round goes inside here. This goes here. And this goes here. And now we'll have access to it. And then we can have the current um, consideration. which should just be a U size. All right, yeah, sorry, I'm doing a little refactoring here. Um, the draw function now becomes, oops, uh, a, um, a function in here. And then this becomes a grove. And then self grove, grove. Insert. And then this is self grove draw. Okay, hopefully I've refactored everything correctly. Let's find out. Nope. Oh, self grove draw. We can do that. All right? And then this doesn't need this thing either. We can just use the self. Oh, dimensions. Yeah, we can we can pull dimensions in as well. Since we need that, um, this becomes self. And then this becomes self dimensions. Like that. Um, and then I have HS self. Grove. Okay, um, self grove. There. Okay, refactored. Morano Fox says default Vim color scheme. No LSP. It seems hardcore life you're living. Uh, I do have an LSP. Uh, I just don't have the things popping up all the time, right? But if I do this. Um, I can pull up like suggestions here, right? Boop, 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 boop. Right? Um, <laughs> and now that's ruined, Grove. Um, and it's not the default color scheme. It's 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 tweaked. It's actually toggle bits color scheme. So um, if there's something that you think that I could use that would make my coding go faster, I'm, I'm all ears. Um, but I can like hit shift K for example, and it'll tell me the, 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 um, the type that I'm on, which is nice. That's a useful little thing. All right. So now that we know what we're doing, do we, I'm going to move these lines up here so I can have this on my screen at the same time, because here's what we're going to do is the first thing we, we do is check the current round starting at the current direction 
um, the direction is for check. Uh, the dir, we're going to just loop, look around our position to see if there's any elves. And if there aren't any elves there, then we're not going to do anything. And then we'll just return new hash set. Um, because that's all we care about, right? We're gonna we go through ten, ten rounds, and then we want to look at what the grove looks like after ten rounds. Oh, we want to create a new grove, self. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna um, for g in self grove. We need to create a new hash set of the where we're going to put the elves. So for we're going to use dir now. We're going to look around ourselves to see if there's any entries in Grove. Do I have to do that to avoid for yeah, we can say dir dot iter dot map d and that should be a that's an unknown for some reason it should be just these two use uh the two uh, i64s let's find out um g should be the i64s definitely yeah so g is zero plus d is zero comma g dot one plus d dot one uh filter Position P, um, self grove contains P. Yep, so that worked out. And then we just count those. Let count equals. Is, it, oops. is this still unknown? Yeah, it's still unknown. That's weird. If count is not equal to zero, if count equals zero, then we can just say result dot push or insert the elf that we're on g right oh star g else um else what are we going to do we need to consider starting from the current direction we're facing or the current direction we're considering first, which is dir. And we're going to loop through all four of them. So for i in 0 dot dot 4, um, let check equals, uh, let count, we can do the same thing. Count is equal to check of um, I plus self dir mod dir len. Dot iter. Dot, and the same thing here, right? Map D. G dot zero plus D dot zero comma G dot one plus D dot one. Uh, filter. P self grove contains P dot count. It's unknown. So I did something wrong there. Oh, I'm, I'm missing a, I'm missing something here. All right, let's let the compiler tell me what I'm missing. Oh, dir is oh self dir, that's it. Oh, that's why those were um. It's still unknown. Self. Expect to grow because of return type. Let's gonna turn the result, right? Um, and now it doesn't like that. Oh, uh, self, grove is result dir is equal to dir plus one mod self dir len right self dir 
Okay. I think we're getting there. I think we're getting there. Um, if the count is zero, right? So they say if there's no elves, right? Not like there's one elf or something. If there's no elf, right? If count is equal to zero, then we found the first one in this list that we've considered that we want to go to. We want to go to. So let mod consider is equal to hash map. And we're going to map. Let me put a type in here so I get it right. I'm going to map a position. Oops, 64. And we're going to map it to a count, right? Of how many want to go there. So we can say consider dot entry of oh this right so the new position is going to be self Um, let delta is equal to self check. Um, yeah, I plus self dir mod self dir len. I probably should make a little accessor for that. So this should be the delta oops, of zero, right? Because we always put the, the, the direction we want to go first in the array, and then the other two are considered as part of the count. So then a new pause is equal to g0 plus delta 0 comma g1 plus delta 1. So new pause or insert 0 plus equals 1. Right. There. Um, if we did find a move, we continue with the loop. And then we want to break. Oh, we, we need to say that we found it, right? Let mut found equals false. Uh, found equals true. If it wasn't found, if we didn't find a place we want to move, then we want to just stay in the same place, right? So we can just say result insert g, just like we did up here. And then we we're done with that. After we're done with the whole grove, now we have this consider hash map. Now we got to figure out, um, oh, okay, so it's not that simple, right? Because what we want to do is say, if here, we want to say, if there's another elf considering going there, then we want to put ourselves in the current location and then that other elf can't move. Um, if consider dot entry of get, hmm. let's do it this way. Uh, let e equals this. If e is equal to zero, then not start E, right? Is it? It's unknown. Uh oh. Well, let me let me keep writing and then they get the compiler again. Because um, it should be ins inserting zero for this new position. If it's zero, then we can move there. If it's not equal to zero already, then we're going to say result insert g. We can't we can't move. So we can say e plus equals one, right? I think I think that's what we have to do. And then at the end, our consider will look at will loop over the consider. Um, pause, and um, count in consider 
unknown unknown oh i know why because i don't think i have hash map yeah yeah okay so now now it should yeah i64 i64 okay okay and now the e's e is already a mute so maybe i don't need an asterisk in front of it or maybe i do i don't know let's find out oh no okay so that's good we're getting close um so now we consider each position if count is equal to zero it's equal to one sorry then we can go into the new position uh result insert pause yeah if the count is not then we have to oh we have to remember the old position that we were in okay we can store that here too Um, so then this becomes e.0.0. If it's equal to 1, then we're going to put ourselves in e.1. Uh, if count is not 1, then we're going to say result insert. The old position, right? That's an I64, that's the U size, and that's the tuple. And then we just return the result. Okay. Let's see how close this is. This is bad. Oh, expected a tuple, right? Or insert. Oh, yeah, we can just do it that way. We can say, or insert this new pause, right? And we don't have to do this business. Who did that? Brimwitz. Brimwitz, thank, thank you for the follow. Um, we can't do star E0. U size can't be dereferenced. Oh, OK. Do we just do that? OK. I think we're getting close. All right. So part one becomes, well, let's do one step, right, with the test data and see what happens. Um, we can say, let's move this down here, self grove draw, and then so let new grove is equal to self grove round. And then say new grove draw, like that. And I still have to put an unsolved on here because of my framework. Okay. Um, oh, well, I guess we got to compare it to <laughs> what's over here, right? So we start here, right? So we, we knew we were reading the input correctly. Let's see, at the end of round one, we have this, those two there, and we're missing one. Dang it. We're missing one. Oh, oh, he's down here, right? Yeah, because everything else looks right. Okay, so we forgot to move one. Um, we should also have the same number each round. I'm going to put that in the draw. Printlin, there are elf count. Uh, self grove len. The number shouldn't change, right? That's that's a key important thing. There's 22 at the beginning. There's always going to be always going to be 22 at the end. Um, but we have one that that didn't move correctly. Okay, so let's figure that out. Um, if count is zero, if count oh maybe we have to handle it. If count is not zero, we need to insert the elf where he needs to be. Oh no, that, that was this. That was this here. Oh, I don't think we can do this. Oh yeah, we can. We can we we can say uh, go to where you um you can't move there, so you're just gonna go to where you're you're gonna be. And 
and this is new entry. It's a count of the of the elves that want to go to the new position is one. It's just me. They go there. Otherwise, we insert the old one. All right. Maybe we just need to um, go through the explanation, or maybe let's let's try the small case here, the small test case. Oops. Copy. Oops. Cat greater than test two. Um, let's do that. Test two. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So something somebody's not moving correctly. It looks like this guy. He was supposed to go south, but couldn't. Or he went too far south? I don't know which one moved. Let's find out. Can we figure out which one's moving? Printlin G not moving. Um, and Printlin G blocked, right? And then here, printlin old pause moving to new pause. And uh, otherwise, this guy's blocked. Okay, so let's see what it says. 2-2 two, two is blocked. 3-2 two, two is blocked. Oh. 2-2 two, two is off the map. And that's because of the, the input has too many. Okay, let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of those. Let's get rid of this. What well, it's throwing me off that there are um the because I want to look at this as zero zero and I can't find zero zero there. So okay, let's rerun. Uh one zero is blocked. Why is one zero blocked? Wait a minute. I'm a little confused right now. Because we shouldn't have negatives right off the bat. Let's do that. Oh, it's looking at zero zero and not doing anything with zero zero. We got to figure out what, what zero zero is doing. It didn't get here and didn't end up here. But it needs to it needs to figure out a move. G cons considering new pause. Hmm. This is a little frustrating. Oh, do I have old pause and pause backwards? Yeah, this is the old position. Left and dead. Thank you for the follow. All right. So zero, zero, zero is considering negative one, negative one. And then it should. Oh, I'm putting new pause in there. Oh. I got to put the old pause in. Yeah, look at that. That I think that's it. OK. Um, Print line. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. That's it. 
Okay, so there's five elves and there's five elves. Did we get the right thing? We got the right thing. Okay, so let's do two rounds. Uh, for something in 0 0.2. Um, let mutt grove equals self grove clone. I think I might have to um, d derive clone. And then we say let new grove is grove round. Can I just say this grove equals grove new round and then draw? And then we see if it looks like this. It does. Okay. Let's just draw the final result then and we can go, we can use the test input. Um, let's, let's do one round on the test input and see if it looks like this. Yeah, okay, so we fixed, the, we fixed that bug. Perfect. Okay, so let's do two rounds and see if it looks like this. End of round two. Oops. Oh, did I forget to wrap something? I bet you I forgot to wrap something. Um, 89. Oh, no. I didn't forget to wrap something. Oh, self Durland. Yes, that's dumb. I did the same mistake here. Okay. That looks right. Should we do one more? Where is it? Right here. So after three rounds, Yes, I, th I think we're good. Okay, so, and the question was after 10 rounds, how many empty ground tiles are there? Okay, so all we need to do now is loop 10 times. We're not going to draw it out. What we're going to do is find out what the dimensions are. And that's just a, a four-way tuple. And then we just need to calculate the Manhattan distance for each Uh, zero and three, sorry, zero and two are the rows and one and three are the columns. We just multiply those together to get the size of the rectangle. And then um, subtract out the number of elves we have. Okay, so we can do that. Let, so this is just um, dim dot zero minus dim dot one abs times dim not not one two dim dot one minus dim dot three abs it's an abs function minus grove dot grove dot len let's do this elf count I'll just put that in here. Uh, elf count self uh, i64 self grove len as i64. And we get an answer of 88. And that's definitely not the right answer. Um, did I not do it 10 times? Oh, I'm using the test input. Duh. Let's see. And it should be 110, and I got 88. So we definitely have a bug somewhere. Let's print out after 10 rounds and see if we look close to what it's supposed to be. Where is it? All right, grove.draw. And this is what it should look like, right, after 10 rounds. End of round 10, there it is. That looks right, that looks right, that looks right. 
Those all look right. So I must be doing this wrong. Well, we know this is always going to be max, so it's going to be min. Um, so I, I can just get away with it just by um, calculating it directly without the abs stuff, right? Let's do that. And we want to get 110. Negative 2, negative 2, 8, 9. Right, so um, this should be dim dot 2 minus dim dot 0 times dim dot 3 minus dim dot 1. And it's like that because I forgot a comma. 110 minus however many elves there are. Oh! Number of empty ground tiles is 110. And my calculation is one is is 110. That doesn't make any sense. Do I have this wrong? No. I'm, I'm, this is weird, right? Because I thought I was getting the dimensions here. This goes negative two, no, sorry, there's negative two to eight and negative two to nine. And that's coming up with 110. And what, what am I doing wrong? If I subtract out the 22 elves, I get 88. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Right? All right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Oh, I'm such an idiot. This is the uh, dimensions are inclusive, not exclusive. Let's leave that here and just do this like this. Uh, let area is equal to this. Yeah, plus one. So I just had to add one each dimension. And then... Um, this is just area minus elf count. Okay. All right. And now I'm going to take out the print statements, which is here and here. We get 110. Let's, now let's use the real input. So test 20, 22, 23. And our answer is 4302. All right, good. Uh, Clippy, get status, get add source, get commit dash M 2022 day 23 part one. All right. Now, is part two for this one going to be as hard as part two was for um, yesterday's? All right, that all worked. God Malik says, yeah, nice. that's the right answer. All right, it seems you're on the right track. Finish simulating the process and figure out where the elves need to go. How many rounds did you save them? In, this exam in the example above, the first round with the no elf move was round 20. Figure out where the elves need to go. What's the number of the first round where no elf moves. Okay, so that shouldn't be too bad because um, all we need to do is check to see if every... Nazrelex, 
Thank you for the follow. Um, we just need to check to see if we, we came through this at all, right? And we can return that. We can do this. <laughs> Would that be silly? And then here we can just say let not moved equals false. Um, if we didn't want to move here, then we can just say moved equals true. This is a little hacky, but I'm just trying to get the answer here. And then we can just say if moved, then return sum of this else none. Right? And now where we call round, we're going to call unwrap here. And we should still get the same answer as before, um, which was some number 4302. Yeah, that was it. Okay. So part two, let's clean this up. Part two then is let mutt grove equal self grove clone. Right? And then we can say let mutt count is equal to zero while grove is sum. Oh, no. Uh, this is supposed to be super easy. Um, loop. If grove let grove equals grove dot step around. If grove dot is none, uh, return create output. Count. Count plus equals one. Can we do that any more simply? Can I say if let oh let me let me see if this answers the problem, answers the question. Oop, we got a warning. What am I not using? Uh oh, infinite loop. Uh, I bet you got an infinite loop. What's the warning? Help remove this mute. 48. Oh, yeah, duh. Uh, grove equals. So we don't want an, a let there. There. Okay, maybe that'll do it. Um, mismatch types. Oh, some. Uh, cargo run. No, say it ain't so. All right. Um, did we figure out moving wrong? There's moved is true, moved is false. If we moved, Oh, it came up with an answer, but it's super slow. Uh, there must be a better way than creating a new grove each time, right? All right, that's the right answer. Uh, what is it in debug mode? I mean, in release mode, out of curiosity. All right, so this is not the most efficient code. Um... What else? What would be another way to make this more efficient? If count to zero, yeah, then do nothing, right? We don't have to do this, but consider is going to be empty anyway, so that's not going to do anything. Good monk says congratulations. Samab says easy part two today. Yeah, it was easy. It was just I. I just have my code is so bad. <laughs> that it takes forever to run, 23 seconds to run. That's terrible. Um.